Today, we're going to be setting up a Polygon ID issuer node locally on your computer. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what Polygon ID is, it is basically a decentralized identifier solution or a Web3 identity solution that accomplishes self-sovereign identity. Now, you might be thinking, okay, like, what does that mean? It's a new way to be able to do authentication where we're, we leverage the technology of zero knowledge proofs to be able to prove something about yourself without actually divulging any information. And in this, there's actually a concept of called, called a triangle of trust, where you have an issuer, which we'll be building out today, the holder in terms of the app, which we'll see, and then a verifier, which is a site or even a contract that is performing, prompting the holder for some sort of verification. When, and they generate a cryptographic proof from that to be able to prove some sort of criteria about themselves without, again, divulging any information about themselves. So again, Polygon ID is an identity solution. It is going to be launched relatively soon in terms of a, a production grade solution. It is a combination of a couple things, which are the actual issuer node itself and the holder or the wallet in this case, which is available on iOS and Android. Now this differs from other cryptocurrency wallets in the sense that it doesn't store cryptocurrency at all. This is a wallet solely for the purposes of being able to store your credentials or your claims in this sense, and be able to generate the cryptographic proofs based on the verifier prompting it. So the repository that we're gonna be using today is the Polygon ID self-hosted ID platform. So this is the self-hosted issuer node that we're gonna be setting up locally. Now I know the team is working hard on updating the documentation and there's gonna be a new release soon. But in the meantime, I did create a specific readme as a walkthrough to go through the entire process of setting this up locally. Now I will be going through this exact documentation to kind of walk you through the process and see if there's any specific hurdles that you might be, that we can kind of address in this specific walkthrough too. Now I just wanna preface that you have to have Docker installed in your computer to be able to get this set up properly as well as Ngrok. Um, now, Ngrok is not a must needed solution. Um, there are other forwarding solutions, but this just is gonna make it easier where we're kind of exposing our local port to a public address. And this is needed because if we're trying to do the verification, we need to be able to point to an address to be able to kind of get those claims and store that on our on our phone and through the, the app itself. And the last thing you'll need is actually some Mumbai testnet tokens in a wallet uh, so that we can actually use those to process transactions on chain. This is essentially the part where the issuer actually writes on chain for a specific credentials and saying, hey, this is still valid. And this is to be able to handle those transactions to make sure that it pays for them in that sense. So here I have a clone repo of the self-hosted ID platform. And the first thing I need to do is set up some of the configurations. And there's a few steps to this, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk through each one to make sure that it's done correctly. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is make a copy of this Tomo file and remove the sample aspect of it to be able to start configuring it. The next thing I wanna do is just double check that I have all my Docker services up and running. Now, in the current repository, there is a small bug where you need to delete some of the images um, fully if you're doing a fresh start. Um, this will be fixed in a future version, but as far as it goes, it's, it's probably good practice just to make sure that you have all these images deleted from your computer to start with. Like I mentioned before, I have an Ngrok account, so all I'm gonna do is set it up so that it proxies or forwards from port 3001. And to do that, I'm just gonna go forward slash because I have the binary, and then I'm gonna type out HTTP 3001. And once it's started, you'll see that I have a forwarding address, both a HTTP as well as a regular non SSL or HTTPS version and we'll be using this address kind of going forward. From there, I'm gonna copy this address and place it in the server URL here in our Tomo file. The next thing I need to do is give it some RPC provider credentials to be able to interact with Mumbai. If we scroll down here, that'll be under the Ethereum placeholder. And in this case, I do have an Alchemy account and I'm just gonna paste the URL here. You'll notice that there's a contract address under this. This is actually the address that lives on Mumbai to be able to update the claims or update the credentials from the issuer to say if something is still valid. The next thing I need to do is set up my vault. And what this is gonna do is make sure that the vault stores all the credentials that we have from our wallet to be able to sign requests essentially. Now, 
there, if you have done this before, there might be some residual files from it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just remove some of these files, make sure that there's no existing files within it, uh, make sure that it's recursive, removes all those files, removes this idem3 plugin file, and removes any vault policies from here. And just in case there is a bin file in here, I just wanna make sure I remove that too, any existing traces of previous configurations. Now that I have that set up, I'm gonna run make up, which will download all our Docker images and run them locally. I can double check that all my services are running by going Docker PSA, and you can see that all have been up, created and up and working um, just a few seconds ago. From here, I need to get the initial root token, which is the sort of the identifier for the vault, where we're gonna be storing our private keys for our wallet to be able to sign transactions. To get that, we're gonna to go to our infrastructure folder, our local folder under vaults, under data, and we should see an init.out that's been produced from our mounted Docker image. In here, we should see a few different keys, but this is the initial root token essentially that we need for our configuration file. So I'm gonna copy this, in our config.toml file, we'll scroll down under token, and this is where we'll place that HVS file, that HVS identifier. The next thing I need to do is load in my private key for my wallet into the vault itself. So I need to be able to go into the actual Docker image for the vault and then execute a specific function. So I'm gonna go Docker exec IT and then go into the vault itself. The next thing I need to do is import my private key. And to do that, I'm gonna go vault write iden3 import pb key key type equals Ethereum, and then my private key is equal to my private key from my wallet. And we successfully imported it to our vault. To exit, I'm just gonna type in exit and press enter. The next thing I need to do is run the actual server itself. Um, now, if you are running an M1 or an M2, you'll need to run a different command for this. I'm running on an M1, so instead of make run, I'm gonna go make run arm which will start our additional server that reads all that, all that information. This is gonna run a few different configurations, so it'll take a few minutes to complete. When it's complete, you'll see like this specific output. What I'm gonna do is just verify that my, all, all my services are running correctly by going Docker PSA, and we should see that there is a new service called SH Platform Platform, and we should be able to see that by going to our localhost 3001. We went to localhost 3001, we should see that our server is up and running. We should also be able to see it by going to our ngrok service. We'll go visit the site, which will bring up the service and show that it's publicly accessible as well. The next thing we need to do is essentially create an identifier for our issuer itself. And this is where we're gonna run a curl command. And I realize that there is actually a Postman configuration for this as well, but to kind of expedite this process against specific data, we're just gonna run curl commands. So you can see here, I'm doing a post where I'm passing in some identity data. You'll notice also that there is a base64 authorization. This is actually defined here from our user and password. This is a base64 of user password. We're sending in a data of Polygon ID and it's on the network of Mumbai. So if we run this, we should get an identifier. And we're gonna keep that because we're gonna need that later. So I'm just gonna copy that and add that here under my notes so that we can reference later. Let's just double check also that the ID exists now. So I'm just gonna reference all the identities that exist on this, on this issuer. And we can see that that same address that was returned on last digit CX matches what's been created on the issuer itself. The next thing I need here is making sure that I have the Polygon ID app installed on my iOS device. And from here, I need to be able to get the identifier that we need to be able to issue out the credentials to. And to do that, I'm gonna go to Polygon ID, load up the app. It's gonna verify my credentials here. I'm gonna to go to my user in the top left, and I'm gonna view my identifier copy that to my clipboard. Now the nice thing with iOS is that you should be able to paste that from your clipboard directly into your code. After that, I'm gonna create a curl command which comes from our issuer ID and sends that claim to specifically the ID from our Polygon ID app. Now this is a credential schema of a KYC credentials where we can see that my birthday is set to 1996 and it's a document type, document type two. And what you can see what that looks like as a definition here by loading up the actual site and you can see all the definitions that give it the description that's needed for identifying that the credentials is specifically for, for KYC. Once I run that, you should see that there's a specific ID that is created for that credential. 
the next thing I'm going to do is just double check that the claim or the credentials has been successfully created in passing through the ID of the issuer node and the claim ID, which we just created. So if we run this, we we'll should see that there is an actual result for that specific claim. After successfully verifying, we're going to run another curl command, which will get the JSON QR data that we need to be able to prompt the app to interpret it and create that claim directly on the phone. So we'll see that we're passing in the DID of the issuer. And then from there is passing in the claims slash QR code to get the data for this. Now, what I need is this full JSON payload. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. I'm going to go to QR.io, click on text and paste that JSON payload to generate the QR code. In my Polygon ID app, I'm going to click on the connect button and it'll prompt my camera to scan the QR code. I'm going to accept, enter my credentials. It'll start adding the claim directly within the app. Give it a couple seconds and we should see that our claim information has been stored on our Polygon ID wallet. The next thing I'm going to do is go to verifier-demo.polygonid.me. From here, I'm going to collect, select KYC credentials less than 200101 SIG. I'll click on sign up. This will prompt a QR code for the verification process. The thing to note about this is it actually follows the same schema that was that we defined earlier from that raw JSON GitHub file. It follows the exact same schema to be able to verify what it's looking for, which is specifically the age. I'll load up my Polygon ID app, click connect. It'll scan the QR code. It'll prompt for that proof of request for the verification. I'll go continue. It's going to generate a cryptographic proof. Verify me. Generate the proof. And we'll see that the membership has been successfully verified. This is an example of doing off-chain verification, but we can't do examples of on-chain verification where it's directly on a contract as well. And that's how we set up a Polygon ID issuer node locally on our computer with Ngrok, Docker, and the verification process using the Polygon ID app. And the next step would be able to set this up on AWS or DigitOcean, but this is a good base to be able to start working with the tech locally and start understanding how verif the verification process works with Polygon ID. Now, if you like this video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.